Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake, the second most disappointing member of the podcast after Sumo DB. Oh, yes, right. The the fifth member of the podcast. That is correct. Currently um, a distant fifth. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is our Bonds K preview episode. Luckily for us, Sumo DB, not highly needed, as I've got all my notes that I need on separate pages. Uh, um, <laughs> but sorry, this one's coming out a week late. Uh, we just needed to take a little bit of time to decompress from that big Hakuho news that we broke last week. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what it was. That's what held us up. <laughs> Hopefully. Everybody realized that was an April Fool's joke. But if you didn't, and this is the next sumo-related thing that you are listening to after that, Hakuho is not coming back to active competition. That was an April Fool's joke. If uh, uh, you still believe that one, that one's on you. Sorry. A little bit, yeah. Uh, but no, we are here to talk about the Natsu Bonds K, what I think is going to happen in that Bonds K. We've got... New people at the top of the Bonds K making committee. So we're trying to figure out are some rules that we saw broke last time. Is that how that's going to be forever? Or are we going to go back to the status quo? But before we dive into that, Jake, do you have any updates on amateur sumo? Yes. By the time this comes out, there will be a, uh, a podcast with me and Kyle Ferreter recapping uh, 2023 nationals and the Kuma Sumo Bash youth tournament. Also coming up this week will be a preview of the Rollertown Showdown with me and Corey Morrison of Dallas Sumo Club. That event is coming up on the 29th in Dallas. Uh, beer release, training seminar, literally, personally, with Gagamaru flying to Dallas uh, to do sumo training. Pretty big deal. I'm going there. Um, even bigger deal. Even bigger deal. Probably the last time I'll get to travel for a couple months. But you know what? It's worth it. Um, and, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be a preview of that one. I'm going to make sure that there's a preview in the newsletter that's coming out in the next couple days here too. Uh, that event is going to be pretty big and certainly one of the most unique events, uh, that, uh, that we've seen in recent times. So make sure to check that out. Uh, that's all I got. All right. So before we dive into the bonds, cage, just an interesting note that Flarek actually sent over to us. Uh, but there is a new Gyo- Gyo- Jesus Christ. There is a new Gyoji Start that is writing. It's, it's, no. It's a wash. Yeah. No, we've, we've got 10 <laughs> pages of outline to get through here, Jake. We don't have the time to start it over. You're right. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> there is a new Gyoji that is writing the Bonds case. Kimura Yonosuke has taken over the Bonds case writing duties from Kimura Yodo as the head. As of the Haru Bonske. Uh, so this will be the Natsu Bonske will be the second one that Kimura Yonosuke has written. So he is the eighth Gyoji post war to write the Bonske, and Yodo had been writing the Bonskes for 16 years. Yeah, and basically all of the Gyojis uh have Kimura as their like family name or like surname, I guess. I don't understand that system, but it's like they effectively have all the same Shikona. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's like Kibura and then there's Inosuke. one other one. Yeah, I don't I don't remember exactly how it all works. But but yeah, but yeah it's mostly Kimura's and like it, I don't understand it. I, I, I know that they all have. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you'd still call it a Shikona at that point, but they 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 all have names that they go by, whether they're Yobidashis or uh, hairdressers, Gyojis, everything. I just think that's one of the cooler parts of Sumo. It, I don't understand it, but it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive into this Bonds K. This one is was interesting as it took shape for me, because uh, this is probably the one that changed the most from my first draft, as I'm just kind of looking at the numbers, moving stuff around, and then I leave that alone for a little while. And then I start writing up the outline and kind of come up the second draft as I'm th thinking more critically about where everybody was going. This one's probably the one that had the most movement from initial draft to, okay, here's my explanation for what I did. Uh, Cause I had to dig into a lot of things and some critical points and change my mind. Uh, so let's start at the top. 
and that is with our Yokozuna, Teru no Fuji, who will once again be fulfilling the role of both Yokozuna and Ozeki for the purposes of the written Bonske only. So poor Kimura uh, Yonosuke, he's only ever had to write Bonskes with Yokozuna Ozeki on it. Poor guy. <laughs> he's always had to write it extra big for Teru no Fuji. Yeah, that uh, such a burden, I guess. <laughs> it's very important and special or something. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and because we have one Yokozuna on the east side, our soul Ozeki is going to be on the west side once again uh, to balance out the sides of the Bonske. And that's going to be Takakesho, who started off the Haru Basho fighting for a Yokozuna promotion. But halfway through, we all know he pulled out due to injury and is now going to enter the Natsu ba Basho fighting to keep his rank. Then we move down to the much less depressing Sekiwake rank, uh, where for the first time in over a year, we will have somebody new at the Sekiwake East rank as Wakataka Kage suffered a losing record in March and potentially a serious knee injury and will be dropping to the Komusubi rank. Uh, so we have two contenders who can take over the Sekiwake East one ranking from Wakataka Kage. Uh, one is Hoshoryu, who went 10 and 5 in his fourth Basho as a Sekiwake, and he might be the first in line, but there's also Kiribayama, who went 12 and 3 and won the U show in his Sekiwake debut. He could jump ahead of Hoshoryu and take that top Sekiwake slot. Uh, and I am going to go with Kiribayama for two reasons. One is that we, we've discussed in the past what it takes to reshuffle the Sekiwake when they have a winning record. Uh, after the Kyushu Basho back in November, when Hoshoryu had 11 wins and Wakataka Kage had eight wins, we talked about, well, should Hoshoryu jump over Wakataka Kage here? What we found out was sometimes in the past it's happened, but recently they have only had a Sekiwake West jump over to Sekiwake East. Uh, when they both had winning records, only when the Sekiwake West won a U show or a June U show. So, what we had here was Kiribayama had a better record than Hoshoryu, and he won the U show, which should be plenty reason for him to jump over uh, Hoshoryu here. But if we need a little bit more evidence, we just need to look uh, at this past Bonske that we had. We had a very similar situation at the Komosubi rank. The Komosubi East spot was opened up, and there were two contenders to take that spot. The higher-ranked Koto no Waka, who had eight wins from Komosubi 1 West, and the lower-ranked Wakamoto Haru, who had nine wins from Komosubi 2 East, I believe. And as we saw in that situation, the lower-ranked uh, Rikshi that had more wins leaped over the higher ranked Rikshi to take the open spot. So for a couple of reasons, I think Kiribayama will jump over Hoshoryu here. I think it's funny that you use the, the prior Bonske as a uh, comparison point. Um, I, I, how funny would it be if uh, you, you're overthinking this, you're typing up a 10 page outline for a Bonske and you're like, Trust oh, me, well, this isn't this what happened. I'm overthinking. No, okay. No, I know there's there's nine and a half pages to go. So like yeah. we're but but no, how funny would it be for it to be like uh somebody just points out, oh uh yeah, you did this last time. Uh you had this guy leapfrog when he shouldn't, and he's like, Oh yeah, sorry, thanks, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> so this time he doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm hoping that's what they do at the bottom of the Bonske with like the Jurio Rikshi, that they're like, Oh no, you forgot to be an asshole to these guys. Let's let's make oh. sure we do that again. Whoops. Yeah. yeah. Okay. First uh, Bonske. First yeah, Bonske. Yeah. Jitters. You got you got some first Bonske jitters. Yeah. That's okay. That's that's why I'm here to help set you straight and tell you what the rules are. Bingo. Yeah. All right. So we've got our first two Sekiwake slots filled uh, with Kiribayama, Sekiwake 1 East, Hoshoryu staying at Sekiwake 1 West. But now we need to consider like every other Bonske we have nowadays. Do we need to open up new Sekiwake slots? So like we saw with Kiribayama last Basho, a Komosubi with 11 wins is, so far in sumo history, an absolute guarantee to create a new Sekiwake slot. And so this past Basho, we had two Komosubi get 11 or more wins, so we should see two additional Sekiwake slots opened up behind Kiribayama and Hoshoryu. 
Daesho had 12 wins, so I think he's going to land at Sekiwake 2 East. Wakamoto Haru had 11 wins. I think he'll be Sekiwake 2 West. Since these guys are creating new slots, uh, they should end up being the bottom rank Sekiwake. Uh, in my experience, it always seems like whoever is creating a new slot that normally shouldn't be there, they're always the lowest ranked person at that rank. Uh, and based on the fact that Daesho had more wins than Wakamoto Haru, I think he will be ahead of Wakamoto Haru, but both of them will be below Kiribayama and Hoshoryu, despite Hoshoryu having the fewest amount of wins amongst that group of four. Sure. Drop down to the Komusubi rank. So there are actually a couple of other guys that had records that could have landed them at the Sekiwake rank had there been any openings. Those are Koto Nowaka, who went 9-6 and six from Komusubi 1 West, and Shodai, who went 10-5 and five from Maegashira 1 West. Both of them, however, should safely land at Komusubi. Uh, and despite Shodai having a better record than Koto Nowaka, I think the fact that Koto Nowaka was previously in the Sanyaku while Shodai was not should keep Koto Nowaka ahead of Shodai on the Bonske. Let him slide over to fill that open Komosubi 1 East spot uh, from the Komosubi 1 West spot. I don't I don't disagree, but I have to inter- interject here. Mm-hmm. I scrolled down because I, you foreshadowed. Um, I'm going to foreshadow a little bit more. Uh, fully two and a half pages of this outline are about the Maegashira 5 and Maegashira 13 ranks. Oh my god! Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get usually, there. it's like you know, it's like the usually Sanyaku it's right in this area. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh man, we're cruising. Yeah. What do you? Why does? Why was Ryan so worried about this one going long? Yeah. My it's Gashira a, Five West is a weird spot <laughs> to have a crisis two pages of, of faith. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll get there, and you'll find out why. We we will. But like, oh my god! Like I I just I was like, wow. Is there just like a lot of complicated ones? No, most of these are just about your normal life. Oh yeah, no, like a one lot paragraph of this, or something. <laughs> a lot of it seems fairly straightforward, but there's just a couple of. I, I've turned spots. in university level homework with less <laughs> less uh, verbose language than. Oh yeah. Uh, could you imagine sure what five. I could do if I put this sort of effort into literally anything else? <laughs> yeah, like your job or like, right? you know, your your degree or whatever. My marriage? Yeah, fatherhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, I'm sorry. Go on, though. We were uh, we're talking about uh, any bonus Komosubis. Yes. Uh, well, first we were talking about where we're going to put Shodai in the Komosubi rankings. Oh, right. uh, so I, I am fairly positive that Shodai will be Komosubi. It isn't cl- immediately clear if he will be Komosubi 1 West or Komosubi 2 East because we also have the falling Wakataka Kage to deal with. So Wakataka Kage went 7 and 8 from Sekiwake, which for the past 30 years has meant you drop no further than Komosubi. We've seen it in the past where they have opened up new Komosubi ranks to keep the falling Sekiwake in the Sanyaku ranks. So the real question in this scenario is, who is creating the extra Sanyaku slot? Is it Shodai or Wakataka Kage? And therefore, who should be the lowest ranked Komosubi? Sure. So luckily, we have some precedent from not too long ago that I hope will uh, guide us in the right direction here. So the last time we had a Sekiwake go 7 and 8 was in Aki of last year. At that time, we had, I think, a total of four, three or four Komosubi. I think three. Um, One Komosubi had a winning record and stayed at Komosubi. That was Kiribayama. And then the two others had losing records and would drop from the Sanyaku ranks completely. So two out of two minimum slots were accounted for at the Komosubi rank. The one Komosubi had a winning record and would maintain their rank and then accounted for uh, the seven and eight dropping uh, Sekiwake to Komosubi. So typically you have two Komosubi. Both of those slots were accounted for from the Sanyaku ranks. But that Basho, there was also a Magashira 1 that went 10 and 5, like Shodai, and a Magashira 3 that went 13 and 2, and both of them needed promotions to Komosubi. 
in that instance, the two by Gashir that were promoted to Komosubi were ranked ahead of the dropping Sekiwake, and that Sekiwake was the bottom ranked Komosubi. So that is exactly what I am going to do for this Bonske. I will place the rising Rikshi Shodai at Komosubi 1 West and the dropping Rikshi Wakataka Kage at Komosubi 2 East. That makes sense. I think that, yeah, um, yeah the I, I mean, my first impression would be if it's a lock for a 7 and 8 Sekiwake to be a Komosubi, then that guy should be the default and then the rising creating guy would, new yeah slots after that's that. at least where my instinct goes but yeah i mean if we have precedent that recent that you know that certainly makes a lot of sense to follow yep absolutely and this bonds k we've we're still keeping the same number of rickshi because we still have to create like we've been creating three extra slots between sekiwake and komosubi consistently for like three or four basho now it feels like yeah. uh this time we're just We've got four Sekiwake and three Komosubi. At least that's what I'm predicting uh, instead of three Sekiwake and four Komosubi that we had back in March. Gotcha. So the total of number of Rikshi on the Bonds K, well, it's always 42. The total, the lowest rank on the Bonds K will remain Maegashira 17 East, according to my prediction. Gotcha. So we get to the zone of death, Maegashira 1, and this things get significantly easier until about that Maegashira 5 West spot Jake was talking about. There were we'll, a lot uh, of... We'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. There were a lot of strong winning records in Sanyaku ranks in March, which means that the Rikshi in the zone of death, who the Sanyaku Rikshi fought for the most part, had bad losing records for the most part. So because there were only two winning records in the Maegashira 1 through Maegashira 4 ranks, it makes filling out these ranks uh, pretty simple because uh, we don't have that log jam that we've – uh, become accustomed to running into at this part of the bonds K uh, where everybody Maegashira one through three Komosubi and Sekiwake all ended up with eight and seven or nine and six records. Yeah. So this time Abi had a nine and six record for Maegashira two. He deserved to be ranked Komosubi by the math, but his record wasn't quite strong enough to force open an extra rank. So he should end up at the Maegashira one East spot. And then the next guy that deserves to be ranked is Midori Fuji. He also deserved to be Komosubi by the math as a result of his 10-5 and 5 record for Maegashira 5, but he's ranked too low for that record to force open a slot because we've seen Maegashira 2 getting a 10-5 and 5 record isn't a guarantee for Komosubi. Um, so he, Midori Fuji should slot in at Maegashira 1 West pretty easily. The next guy that deserves to be placed in the rankings is Takayasu after his 10 and 5 record from Maegashira 7. He also deserves to be ranked Maegashira 2. So this is all working out pretty perfectly. Sure. Uh, but there is a little bit of a wrench. We have Toby Zaru, who went 6 and 9 from Komosubi. And we do know that Rikshi dropping out of Sanyaku ranks can get some special treatment a lot of the time. So last Basho. This actually went wrong for me. I predicted that Meisei, who went 5-10 and 10 from Komosubi, would be ranked ahead of Onosho, who went 10-5 and 5 from Maegashira 8, despite the fact that Onosho deserved to be two ranks ahead of... Uh, despite the fact that Onosho deserved to be two ranks ahead of Meisei. The Bonsuke committee saw it differently and put Onosho ahead of Meisei, so two-rank difference was too much for Meisei to overcome there, even though he was dropping out of the Sanyaki ranks, and even though we've seen a two-rank difference not mean a whole lot in the past. Uh, but this time, Takeyasu deserves to only be one rank ahead of Toby Zaru. So I'm going to once again predict that the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi uh, stays just a little bit higher uh, than he otherwise should. And I've got Toby Zaru landing at Maegashira 2 East and Takeyasu at Maegashira 2 West. I mean, then... obviously, I disagree, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll agree to disagree on that one. That's fair enough. We we can get back to that at the end when we figure out what Jake thinks I messed up on this Bonske. Yeah, for the 45th Bonske in a row, I, I think Takayasu should be promoted to Ozeki. Yeah, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. But we'll move on. We'll we'll cross that bridge at the end of the at the end of the episode <laughs> and we'll talk about Maegashira 3. And Maegashira 3 East is incredibly clear cut. Endo went 9 and 6 for Maegashira 6 and should rise three ranks to Maegashira 3. The next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked both deserve to be Maegashira 5, so there's no competition for Endo to take the spot. So 
easily at Magashira 3 East is Endo. But now we have to figure out which of the two Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Magashira 5 will be pulled up to the Magashira 3 rank. It's going to be between Ura, who went 9 and 6 at Magashira 8, or Nishiki Fuji, who went 10 and 5 at Magashira 10. Both of them were in the same area of the Bonds case, or so typical tiebreaker rule should apply here. No Joy Bias or Sanyaku Bias should come into play. So first tiebreaker is East Side Bias, but both of them were on the West Side, so that doesn't come into play. And then we have to take a look at the number of wins. Nishiki Fuji had more wins than Ura, so Nishiki Fuji should jump ahead of Ura in the rankings here and take the Magashira 3 West slot, a healthy Seven rank promotion for Magashira 10 for Nishiki Fuji is what I've got predicted here. Not bad. We'll see if it happens. And then at Magashira 4, if Nishiki Fuji deserved that Magashira 3 West rank, then the guy he was competing with, Ura, should land at Magashira 4 East uh, because the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked deserves to be Magashira 6. So nobody really competing uh, against Ura for this spot at Magashira 4 East. So that will round out the joy, the top 16 wrestlers, should everybody show up and compete this Basho, which I think things are finally trending to Terano Fuji being back. So uh, Ura should be that cutoff for this Basho, but we all know things will happen and that won't be the same. So first okay. up in line to start facing an onslaught of Sanyaku Rikshi should somebody not show up. At Magashira 4 West, I've got Nishkigi. Um, it's let me back up a little bit. The the Magashira 3 West and Magashira 4 East ranks are a little bit of a preview of what's about to come in this section of the Bonds K because we were oh, pulling somebody up from Magashira who deserved to be Magashira 5 up to Magashira 3. We simply don't have enough Rikshi that deserve to fill out these upper Magashira ranks, so we've got to do some over promotions and under demotions. Uh, to fill out the Magashira 4 West rank, the next Rikshi that we have to choose from is Nishkiki, uh, who deserves to be Magashira 6 after a 6-9 and nine record for Magashira 3. A one, ra one rank drop after a 6-9 and nine record in this portion of the Bonds Kate isn't unheard of, but it is pretty rare. But the next Rikshi that would be available is Keen Bozon who would be getting a 10 rank promotion after an 11 and four record for Magashir 14. Once again, not unheard of, but I don't think they're going to be putting a Magashir 14 Rikshi that deserves to be ranked behind a joy Rikshi ahead of that joy Rikshi. Sure. Uh, even if it means only a minor demotion for Nishkigi. Uh, so I've got him being fairly lucky here, uh, falling only one rank to Magashir four West. Sure. I mean, they're still demoting him. So yeah, exactly. At Magashira 5 East, as I mentioned, the next person available would be Keen Boson, who deserves oh, to be ranked Magashira 7, but there just really aren't any other viable options at this point. So I have Keen Boson getting a 9 rank promotion to Magashira 5 East. <laughs> There's 15 different bullet points coming up for this rank at four different levels of bullets, like tabbed in. <laughs> Well, let's is, stop talking. Let's stop teasing them, Jake. I'm let's just, get to I it. I got to prepare myself here. This is like the mental version of stretching out a little bit before uh, before going into combat. This, um, is, this is my magnum opus. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> it sounds good. Let's let's hear it. All right. So the Magashira Five West is probably the toughest one for me to fill out on this Bonds K, because our current situation is bleak. By the math, the next Rikshi that deserve to be ranked are actually Asanoyama and Ichinojo, who would both be promoted from Jurio with fantastic what? records. <laughs> but there is no way in any world that I am going to be predicting any Jurio Rikshi to be promoted this high, even if both of them have won a U show and one is a former Ozeki. No way I'm doing that. That They're the next guys after King Boson? They deserve... Based on a 14-1 record from Jurio 3 and a 13-2 record from Jurio 1, they deserve to be ranked Magashira 7 if you what? just go strictly by the numbers. <laughs> right, and that's that's kind of where your first draft comes from that you mentioned is you go strictly by the numbers and you just like well, whoever's in no, there. No, I, I, I never had EC and Asano Yamanichi. Well, no, no, no. I just but mean yeah, like but yeah. your, your starting point is you figure right. out like based on this many wins, he probably goes up roughly this many ranks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's nuts to me that you have Jurio guys deserving M7. Yeah. 
and yeah and the three ranks above that are all just completely blank so <laughs> what a what a garbage fire so if we're going to be eliminating Asanoyama and Ichinojo, which I just think you have to, you can't, you can't <laughs> jump on. these guys that high. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what, what does that leave us with for options? So we have Tamawashi, who went 3-12 and 12 for Maegashira 1 and would only drop four ranks to Maegashira 5. That has only happened once, and that was in the 50s before the current six Basho per year system was implemented. So not a great option. <laughs> no. We've got Ryuden, who went 2-13 and 13 for Maegashira 2 and would only drop three ranks to Maegashira 5. That has never happened in the 15-day Basho era, and Ryuden wouldn't be ranked ahead of Tamawashi, so he isn't a real option anyways because Ryuden has to be ranked behind Tamawashi. Sure. So right now our candidate is Tamawashi. Then we've cool. got Mitake Yumi, who went 4-11 and 11 for Maegashira 3 and would only drop two ranks to Maegashira 5. This has happened three times, but all of them were back in the 60s. Mitake Yumi and Tamawashi are tied for priority at this point, both of whom deserve to be ranked Maegashira 10. Uh, so <laughs> Mitake Yumi is a realistic option to fill this uh, hole so far. Mm -hmm. Then we have Meisei, who went 5-10 and 10 for Maegashira 4 and would only drop one rank to Maegashira 5. This has happened twice, once in the 40s and once in the 50s, both before the six Basho per year modern era. Uh, and when I say it's happened twice, I mean a Maegashira 4 with a 5 and 10 record dropping a Maegashira 5, not necessarily a 5 and 10 Rikshi dropping only one rank, because we have seen that happen a couple of times. Uh, January of last year, right. remember the 5 and 10 Shima Naumi falling from Maegashira 9 west to Maegashira 10 east easily the most bullshit ranking i have ever seen <laughs> yeah i remember that one <laughs> yeah uh but we have also seen toby zaru go from Maegashira 2 to Maegashira 3 after a 5 and 10 record but uh, we like him so that one's less bad yeah uh <laughs> and if we look in comparison to tamawashi and mitake yumi Meisei deserves to be ranked ahead of both of those guys. He deserves to be ranked Maegashira 9 as opposed to Tamawashi and Mitake Yumi's Maegashira 10. So he might be the leading candidate at this point. Mm. Uh, also on the board but not happening is Onosho, who went 4-11 and 11 for Maegashira 4. Uh, that one's not going to happen. Uh, he has to be behind Meisei, so it's not a real option. Sure. Then another real option is Koto Shoho, who went six and nine from Maegashira five east and could fe feasibly drop one half rank to Maegashira five west of the Rikshi <laughs> on the board. He deserves to be the highest ranked of the ones available, Ugh. but a slide from the east to the west side of the Bonske after a six and nine record is unprecedented this high up in the rankings. It mm. has happened a couple of times and within the past couple of years since I've been doing predictions, but that's only once you get to the double digit Maegashira ranks where it's the wild, wild west and the rules don't really apply sure. uh, anymore. And then the last candidate to feel this my fill this Maegashira 5 West spot is just simply the next Rikshi that had a winning record. And that would be Takanosho, who went 8-7 and seven for Maegashira 11. Oh. Of, of the Rikshi with a winning record oh. that we haven't placed and weren't in Jurio, he deserves to be ranked the highest at Maegashira 10. Oh, I but, hate that. <laughs> but he also deserves to be behind Koto Shoho and Meisei, and deserves to be the same rank as Tamawashi and Mitake Yumi, who would seemingly have Joy Bias on their side. So what what oh, do we that. do here? <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> oh. Luckily, we've got a couple of scenarios that happened within the past couple of years that I was able to look back on and see how they were handled. And they actually occurred in back-to-back -back Bonds case in 2021. Because mm. uh, the beginning of 2021 is like, all the Bonds case were just like this. It's just <laughs> massive over promotions, massive under demotions. Mm -hmm. So in Haru of 2021, Chiyo no Kuni jumped from Maegashira 9 to Maegashira 3 after an 8-7 and seven record. This would be the same jump uh, Takanosho would have if he landed at Maegashira 5 in our current scenario. In this case, Chiyo no Kuni was basically the only option. The Rikshi that hadn't been placed on the Bonds K and deserved to be ranked higher than Chiyo no Kuni all had seven and eight or six and nine records from a lower rank than the rank that needed to be filled. So those options couldn't be promoted. 
and Chiyo no Kuni deserve to be the same rank as 4 and 11 Onosho, who was ranked Maegashira 1 that Basho, and Onosho would have only dropped two ranks to take that spot. So Chiyo no Kuni did not go ahead of anyone else that could take that spot, so his overpromotion was basically forced. He deserved to have the same rank as Onosho, but I just think they wanted to avoid dropping a 4 and 11 Rikshi to ranks. They wanted to demote him as much as they could without demoting him past like people who uh, didn't deserve to be ranked higher than him. And Chiyo Nokuni deserved the same rank, so Chiyo Nokuni got that 6 rank promotion. Yikes. And, and then we just have to look to the next basho in natsu of 2021 that is the toby zaru situation where he dropped from maigashira 2 to maigashira 3 after a 5 and 10 record the next rikshi that deserved a promotion that could have taken that spot was kodoeko who went 9 and 6 for maigashira 12 all other rikshi with winning records ahead of him had already been placed on the rankings there also weren't any Rikshi ranked higher than Toby Zaru with a losing record that hadn't already been placed on the Bonske. Uh, so the option in this scenario was to either drop Toby Zaru only one rank after a 5-10 and 10 record or promote somebody that had a winning record but deserved to be ranked lower than Toby Zaru. They decided to go with the Rikshi that deserved to be higher in the rankings, Toby Zaru. And that's the same thing that we saw in that bullshit Magashir 9 West to Magashir 10 East 5 and five and 10 demotion. He mm. didn't go ahead of anybody that deserved to be ranked um, higher than him. He just was the next guy that deserved to be ranked if you're discounting uh, Jurio Rikshi, which you always should because they are the scum of the earth. Of course. So... Our current situation that we're looking at is closer to that Toby Zaru scenario than the Chiyo no Kuni scenario. So I, my current thought is Takanosho is eliminated from contention for that Maegashira 5 West rank because we've got Koto Shoho and Meisei who both deserve to be ranked ahead of Takanosho. So I don't think they're going to jump Takanosho ahead of them for the purpose of just moving those other guys further down the bonds. Okay. So gotcha. then it comes down, in my mind at least, to Koto Shoho or Meisei for who can take the spot. So if we are placing Rikshi solely by rank, then Koto Shoho would deserve this spot. But due to Terano Fuji's absence, Meisei basically fought a joy schedule. He fought six Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks. He fought a lot of guys, Magashira 1 through Magashira 3, while Koto Shoho fought a very clearly mid Bonds case schedule. Sure. So due to joy adjacent bias, <laughs> I'm going to let Meisei be ranked ahead, end up ranked ahead of Kodo Shoho in my prediction, have him drop one rank to the Maegashira 5 West rank. And this this area of the Bonsuke that we're about to get to is what changed the most for me when I did this research. Uh, so when I started this, I had Takenosho at the Maegashira 5 West rank. I didn't even have Meisei on the board as a possibility uh, for taking that rank. In my mind, it was Takenosho or Koto Shoho, but going through those two scenarios really makes me feel like Takenosho is probably not really in consideration. I think it'll come down to Meisei or Koto Shoho. Sure. And we saw in the last Bonds K some just mean treatment to a couple of Rikshi with seven and eight records, and the only thing we could think of was, well, they wanted to make sure they got demoted at least a rank. So that's another thing that's making me think, I don't think they want to slide Koto Shoho from the east side to the west side after a six and nine record. Maybe they want to see him get a full rank demotion here. I gotcha. And yeah, I mean, as, as much as... Uh having the double digit losses looks different. That's really only one win different between the two guys. So True. like maybe it's not that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, whenever you write out these novels about why there's a specific thing happening at a specific rank, I'm like, Oh boy, here we go. And then we get to the end and it's like, but it makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Like, <laughs> I hate that it does, but like it, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, no, I, 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 I totally think you're right. And I'm just, for spoilers, I'm not going to pick this to be like the thing that I think you got wrong that we discuss at the end, just because like there's there with like 11 candidates that it could potentially have been like, <laughs> yeah, of course, we've already discussed this one plenty. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's let's move on from the Maegashira five West rank, shall we? Please. All right. Maegashira <laughs> six. 
I think I think Kota Shoho should be the next guy to go here. Uh, he's going to end up dropping one rank for a six and nine record. That's acceptable in emergency situations. Hell, we already did that with Nishkigi without batting an eyelash. He's the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked, ign- of course, ignoring the jury of promotees. So at Maigashira 6 East, I've got Koto Shoho. Now we need to fill the Maigashira 6 West rank. And to do that, we need to look at the pool of Rikshi that deserve to be Maigashira 10. Oh, yeah. So there are two Rikshi that deserve to be ahead of this group that deserve to be Maigashira 10. Uh, they are Sada no Umi and Hokuto Fuji, who deserve to be ranked Maigashira 8 and Maigashira 9, respectively. But both of them had losing records from either the Maigashira 6 West rank or below that, so they can't fill this spot. Sure. Because Sada no Umi was previously Maigashira 6 West. He had a 6 and 9 record, so we can't keep him uh, there. You if can't even flipped, use a, If it was a 7 and 8, you could maybe use him as a stopgap. Yeah, but we're not in that situation. Got it. So we got to take a look at a group of three Rikshi, and those are Tamawashi, Mitakiyumi, and Takanosho. If we use the classic tiebreaker rules, Takanosho is eliminated on two counts, Joy Bias and East Side Bias. Takanosho was the only one on the west side, while Tamawashi and Mitakiyumi were on the east side. So then we look at the number of wins, which Mitakiyumi has four compared to Tamawashi's three. So I have him landing at Maigashira's six west, dropping only three ranks after a four and 11 record. Lucky guy. Yeah. Then we get to Maigashira seven, and we finally get to a stopgap Rikshi in Hokuto Fuji, who went seven and eight in the previous Basho. He deserves to be ranked two ranks ahead of the next Rikshi that could be placed, so I think it's pretty safe to leave him here. Uh, as we discussed in the last Bonds K recap episode, we did this with Hokuto Fuji last time and with Ura, leaving them both at seven and eight records when they both deserve to be... Uh, the next place Rikshi. So we just kept them in place, but for some reason, the bonds K committee decided to demote them anyway. So it's not a, a lock for Hokuto Fuji here, but I think we're in more desperate times than we were in the last Basha where we came across that situation. Sure. So the next rank Maigashira seven West is going to be a debate between Tamawashi, who we believe has that tiebreaker over Takanosho versus Sada no Umi. So Sada no Umi went six and nine at Maigashira six, and he does deserve to be one rank ahead of Tamawashi, but I am going to go with joy bias here and have Tamawashi land at the Maigashira seven West rank, dropping six ranks after his three and 12 record, which isn't wholly unprecedented in recent times. We saw that happen in 2021, probably in one of the Haru or Natsu Bashos that we were talking about where we had a bunch of uh, under demotions and over promotions. So similar situation here, uh, uh, six rank drop for Maigashira one with three wins perfectly in line with what we've seen happen in the past. Sure. My Gashira eight at this point, I'm kind of starting to feel bad for Takanosho. He was, he was in real consideration for, for me, for the My Gashira five West rank. We've brought him up like every other rank. And here we are at My Gashira eight East. And I'm still not putting him on my bonds. <laughs> yet because we've got Sada no Umi that deserves to be ranked ahead of Takanosho available to us. And Takanosho doesn't have joy bias on his side like Tamawashi did to skip ahead of Sada no Umi. So there's no reason to put Takanosho ahead of Sada no Umi. So Sada no Umi landing at Maigashira 8 East. But finally, after three ranks of teasing him, it is time for Takanosho to land on my Bonds K prediction at Maigashira 8 West. He is, because now he is, he is the guy that deserves to be ranked next on the Bonds K, a uh, guy who deserves to be ranked Maigashira 10. And he's still getting a two rank over promotion. So don't feel bad for talking no show. <laughs> He'll manage. He's still doing pretty good for himself. Then we get to Maigashira 9 East. And the next Rikshi that deserves to be placed on the Bonds K is Hida de Umi. But he went seven and eight from Maigashira 9 West. So we can't exactly slide him over to Maigashira 9 East. That would be a promotion. So we've got to look at Rikshi that deserve to be Maigashira 11, of which we have two, Onosho and Takara Fuji. Uh, this should be slam dunk case for Onosho here. He's got joy bias on his side. He's got east side bias on his side. So he should end up ahead of Takara Fuji. And then we get to Maigashira 9 West, which he went 7 and 8 from this rank. We're still over promoting, under demoting people. 
I would usually never hesitate to leave him at his current rank. But after the last boss show, how the Bonske committee moved down seven and eight Ura in favor of Rick Shee, he deserved to be ranked ahead of. I, I'm not so sure what they do with uh, Hira Duumi here. Do they uh, put Takoto Fuji ahead of him just for the sake of moving Hira Duumi down? Do they use Ryuden here to kind of plug a hole and prevent further under demotions and over promotions? Because that's that that is the situation we see a lot. Is you got a guy that gets three or two wins in the Magashira one through three ranks, and where they fall in the Bonske kind of just relies on. Where is there a hole in the bonds K that we can fill to further prevent over promotions or under demotions? So Ryuden is a prime candidate for that here. Sure. Is this where we start thinking about placing the Jurio promotees, Asanoyama and Ichino and Ichinojo? Of course. There's not. on yeah. That's that's too many <laughs> questions for me to evaluate. So I'm just gonna do the easy thing and hope they keep Hiro to Umi here at Magashira next. <laughs> okay. You're it's not gonna the bring easiest up some, and like, best thing to do. And I was pretty burnt out on doing research at this point. Uh, so wasn't going to try to do anything to make me change my mind. We're just going with the easy route. He had to do it with me. You're, you're not going to bring up some edge case from like before the United States was a country or something like that. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're cool with the seven and eight guy. Yeah. We're going to be cool with the seven and eight guy. Uh, we're going to, we're just kind of waiting to see, do they uh, break the trends that we had seen two times in a row? If they do that, then we're going to start playing by new rules. But until further notice, we're considering some of the things that happened in the last Ponce K of Fluke. Sure. All right. So at Maigashira 10 East, this is where I'm going to place Ryuden. He's not the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked, but we have seen in the recent past where Joy Bias can make up for quite a bit. Uh, so for Joy Bias alone, I'm going to put Ryuden here ahead of Takoto Fuji, despite Takoto Fuji deserving to be uh, two ranks ahead of Ryuden. Uh, and because I'm putting Ryu in here, that means I got Takoto Fuji going at Maigashira 10 West. Then we get down to Maigashira 11. We have a group of four Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 12 that we need to put in the right order. Uh, those four Rikshi are Aoyama, Daishoho, Kotoeko, and Hokuseho. So of this group, Aoyama, Daishoho, and Hokuseho were on the east side, so all of them should be ranked ahead of Kotoeko. Hokuseho had nine wins compared to Daishoho's eight and Aoyama's six. So Hokuseho should take the Magashira 11 East rank and Daishoho the Magashira 11 West rank. Then drop down to Magashira 12. Aoyama would then take the Magashira 12 East rank, leaving the Magashira 12 West rank for Kotoeko. So one of the reasons... Well, let me just jump to it. So in Magashira 13... This is where I will be putting our Jurio promotees. Uh, Ichi Nojo at Magashira 13 East and Asanoyama at Magashira 13 West. So initially, my first thought when putting together this Bonds K was I was going to put Ichi Nojo and Asanoyama around Magashira 11 ahead of this group of four that we just placed at Magashira 11 and Magashira 12. And I think, in my mind, that's the first realistic spot that they could go. They're, Maybe, they're not going into single digits like that. that I don't think so. Really happen, that, right? this, yeah, I, I don't think so. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to make sure happened on the Bonds K before I even considered this, guys, was I wanted to make sure that all Rikshi that were previously in the Joy were placed on the Bonds K before we even considered any of the Jurio Rikshi. And we had that with Ryuden landing at Maigashira 10. So why not put these guys uh, at Maigashira 10 West starting there? Uh, I mean, like we said, Ichinojo and Asanoyama both deserve to be ranked Maigashira 7, and then the other guys that we put ahead of them deserve to be Maigashira 12. That's a five-rank difference. Yeah. Um, but we also – I also wanted to make sure that I wasn't promoting these Jurio Rikshi ahead of too many Makuuchi Rikshi with winning records. Because typically you don't place any Jurio Rikshi until all Makuuchi Rikshi with a winning record have been placed. Even last Basho, which was friendly to the Jurio Rikshi, we still made sure we placed all Makuuchi Rikshi that had a winning record ahead of all Rikshi being promoted from Jurio, even if that meant putting a guy like Takata Fuji, who deserved to be Makashira 15, at Maigashira 12, ahead of a Jurio guy that deserved to be Maigashira 13. Sure. Uh, but 
that's what we typically do. You also don't typically have a 13 and two Jurio one Rikshi or a 14 and one Jurio three Rikshi, let alone both of them on the same bonds. K. Possibly the strongest promotee candidates that we've seen in years ever. Yeah. Yeah. At, that I have seen and had to place on a bonds. K. Yeah. I think the, the next best case we've had was a 12 and three from Jurio one. And, and they ended up at like, 12 or 13 so yeah that, that's just what happens it doesn't yeah <laughs> nothing else really matters that much yeah so we we know ichi nojo and asanoyama are gonna pass some guys with winning records that's not unheard of like i remember they just gotta uh, really earn it right yeah like uh back when oho made his first debut i believe he went 10 and 5 from juria one and i think when i made my prediction i had him behind everybody with the winning record despite like the bottom guy in Maku Uchi having only an eight and seven record I had Oho behind him no Oho jumped him uh so we know that guys like Tsudagisho and Mitoru at the bottom of the Bonsuke with eight and seven records they're they're going to be passed by the Jurio guys that's not an issue what I I start to question is Daishoho and Kotoeko they both had eight and seven records they were Magashira 13 they were four ranks clear of Jurio Will the Bonsuke committee jump the Jurio guys ahead of them? And then what about Hokuseiho? He was only a of 15, but he had nine wins. Are the Jurio guys going to jump him as well? I don't know. But <laughs> ultimately, what uh, the deciding factor for me was if we placed Asanoyama and Ichinojo at like Magashira 11, like a little bit after we placed Ryuden, we would then have to over demote or under promote to Maigashira Rikshi in that group of four because Ichinojo and Asanoyama would end up at Maigashira 11. Then we had a group of four Rikshi that deserved to be Maigashira 12. Only two of them could land at Maigashira 12. The other two ah. would be at Maigashira 13, and there would be uh, over demoted in Aoyama's case, dropping four ranks for a nine and six record, or under promoted uh, in Kotoeko's case, rising only. Uh, half a rank from Maigashira 13 West to Maigashira 13 East after an eight and seven record. So when we get to something like that, the tiebreaker of you're coming from Jurio means you are the one that we are going to be meaner to. Yeah, that and, and oh, I don't okay. really have any stats to back that up. In fact, looking at the previous bonds, I have stats to go directly against that. Um, but I've got to make a decision and that's, that's the only way that I could make a decision that I felt good with was using that kind of logic. So I just I just don't think we want to put Jurio Rikshi. We we don't want to put Jurio Rikshi ahead of Micah Shiro Rikshi if it's gonna force, especially over demotions. Sure. So when looking at putting Asanoyama and Ichinojo here, let's kind of look at the full picture. At this point, there are no Makauchi Rikshi that deserve to be ranked higher than Maigashira 15. There are no more Joy Rikshi to contend with, and all the Makauchi Rikshi that had a winning record were ranked Maigashira 16 or below, so we feel good about passing them pretty easily. I think this is a perfect place to plug in the Jurio guys. May seem harsh given their records, but despite the atypical big names that these two are, I wanted to try and treat them like any other Jurio promotee, and this is how I feel like they would be treated. Yeah. Um, I due think that's to, a fair, a fair thought process to start. Yeah. With. Due to tiebreaker rules, I've got Ichinojo jumping ahead of Asanoyama. He had the better record. They were both on the East side. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bonsuke committee flipped these two. Uh, but for my Bonsuke, Ichinojo is my 13 East and Asanoyama is my 13 West. For some reason in my mind, backed up by zero evidence at all. I feel like Jurio one Rikshi just gets slightly better treatment. So that's the only reason I'm thinking Asanoyama might stay ahead of Ichinojo, but that's not based on anything. So I'm going to have Ichinojo jump ahead of him here. Sure. So then things get a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> Maigashira 14 on the east side. Chiyoshoma is the next clear guy that deserves to be ranked. I have him landing at Maigashira 14. And to immediately contradict myself, this is actually an under under promotion for Chiyoshoma. Uh, he was Maigashira 16, had a 96 record. He should be Maigashira 13. But when I was doing my research, is like, 
how many guys should I expect Ichinojo and Asanoyama to pass? I did see a case where a Mikashira 16 Rikshi with a 9 to 6 record was passed by a Juria 1 Rikshi with either 12 or 13 wins. So I'm going to allow the under demotion because it's Chiyoshoma, who cares? And it's the bottom <laughs> of the bonds cake. Not, not all rules are going to be followed at the same time. We, we get slightly loosier, goosier as we go lower on the bonds cake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then for the Mikashira 14 West spot, <clears throat> there is a group of three Rikshi that are tied for deserving this spot. And based on all of our tiebreakers, Miyu Giryu should be the one to take the Mikashira 14 West rank. Then at Mikashira 15, we've just got the other two members of that three-way tiebreaker um, to take these spots. And those were Ichi Yamamoto, who went 4-11 and 11 from Mikashira 8, and Suda Gisho, who went 8-7 and 7 from Mikashira 16. Ichi Yamamoto has east side bias on his side, so I've got him landing on the east side and Sudagisho on the west side. Magashira 16. So before the last Basho, I would have thought this rank was pretty easy. Mitoryu and Oho are tied for deserving this rank alongside a Juryo Rikshi. So in the past, disregard the Juryo Rikshi. Put Mitoryu and Oho here without a second thought. But as we saw in the last Basho, that's not necessarily the case. But in this scenario, I do think the Jurio Rikshi will not go ahead of these two. And it's for the same reason that I didn't put Asanoyama and Ichinojo ahead of like Hokuseho, Aoyama, and that group. Because somebody would get over demoted or under promoted here. And I think more than likely somebody would get over demoted, which I think is a larger sin in the Bonds Cake Committee's eyes than an under promotion. So, and, and once again, that necessarily doesn't even matter because the last Basho, by putting Hokuseho ahead of Mitoryu when they deserve to be the same rank, Mitoryu dropped two ranks after a seven and eight record and got a little bit of an over demotion there. So I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm kind of waiting for this Bons K to come out. If we treat the Jurio guys nice on this Bons K too, then I think I'm going to start predicting that in the future. But until I am shown otherwise, I'm going to consider that a fluke. Makes sense. So I'm going to disregard the Jurio Rikshi for the Magashira 16 conversation, which leaves us with a tie between Mitoryu and Oho. Based on tiebreakers, Mitoryu should be the Magashira 16 East Rikshi after his 8-7 and seven record for Magashira 17 East. And Oho should be the Magashira 16 West record. Rikshi after his seven and eight record for Magashira 15 West. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's, um, I don't know. We've talked about this on the preview and, and, and recaps, but like, Oh, ho, I just, I, every time I see him this low on the bonds, it's like, come on, man. Like we've been following you your whole career. You're, you're, uh, you're, uh, uh, I don't know. Colleague, I guess. The guy who started at the same <laughs> Temporary. time. Temporary. Uh, contemporary, yes. His contemporary Hoshoryu is at the top of the Bonds K. Damn. I just <laughs> I, I want Oho to get up there so that that rivalry can continue the way that I had like written it in my head years ago. Do you want to join me on the have given up on Oho bandwagon? I, yes, I want to, but that doesn't mean <laughs> I'm able to. Whatever. We can talk about that more on the preview. All right. So let's look at the Magashira 17 rank. The last spot in my Bonds K, and th this one will really determine if the Bonds K committee is actually being nice to Jurio Rikshi now. So Gonoyama is the Jurio Rikshi in question. Um, he deserves to be one rank ahead of Kageyaki, uh, and Kageyaki went 5-10 and 10 for Megashira 12. So our old rules would dictate that this spot simply just goes to Kageyaki, as Kageyaki did not deserve to be two ranks lower than the Jurio Rikshi, and that was our two rank rule. If the Jurio Rikshi didn't deserve to be two ranks higher than you, you went higher than the Jurio Rikshi. But obviously, last Bonske, that rule did not apply. So if the Bonske committee is nice <clears throat> and Gono Yama is selected here ahead of Kageyaki, then Kageyaki will be over demoted six ranks for a five and 10 record down into Jurio, which I am going to continue to basically insist is a thing that the Bonske committee wants to avoid. Uh, <laughs> Plus, it's Kageyaki. When does he ever get bad Bonds K luck? That's so, exactly what I was going to say next. It's Kageyaki. Yeah. 
Yeah, he can so, he can get seven and eights for a year and stay in the top division somehow. <laughs> He's literally done it. Mm-hmm. So I am going to be giving this last spot to Kageyaki, and then we can all blame Mitoru and Sudugisho for getting a win on day 15 and preventing us from seeing promising newcomers like Gonoyama and Shonan Naomi in the top division in May. Uh, Thanks, guys. Yeah. So ultimately for Gonoyama, I think there's just too many guys in the top division that had losing records, but not demotable losing records. I, I really think if you you need to have a record that deserves to send you down into Jurio if you're going to be demoted into Jurio. Unfortunately uh, for us, Kageyaki did not quite have a demotable record that the math would tell us says he should go down into Jurio. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, we're just going to go with our old doctrine of B dicks to Jurio Rikshi until proven otherwise. And we're getting a lot closer to proven otherwise than we used to be. Yeah. Uh, good, good sign. Cause yeah, it's something that uh, it's, it's one of those things where like, I, I really like seeing new guys from Jurio. Mm -hmm. um, and I hate seeing old guys like Tsuda Gisho. I mean, Tori has only been up in the top division for three Basho, but I'm already so over old. him. He, he feels so gatekeepery already. Yeah, exactly. He he's gotten oh yay. Uh Sumo D B is now the Oh nice second, of you to join us, Sumo D B. It is now the second uh most disappointing and has leaped you. Um Damn. but yeah. <laughs> Mitoriu's only been up in the top division uh three Basho. He's gotten <laughs> Two losing records and then this eight and seven. Yeah, I, I'm already completely over me toward you and want him <laughs> permanently in Jurio. And it doesn't help that he's already 28 years old. And unless you're like Wakamoto Haru and just give me a year straight of winning records, if you're 28 years old and you're floundering at the bottom of Makauchi, just get out of here and let the next guy try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got to be no a patience for this. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be a Yokozuna. So your time is just wasting. <laughs> Absolutely. Get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So ultimately, I've only got two promotees from Jurio, those being Asanoyama and Ichinojo. To make room for them, we've got to get rid of two Rikshi, and those are Azumaru, who went, uh, wh what did he went? He went 4-11 and 11 from Maegashira 11, and then Bushozan, who went 5-10 and 10 from Maegashira 14. Uh, both of those guys. Azumario, by the math, he deserves to be Jurio 1. Bushozan, by the math, deserves to be Jurio 2. Those are demotable records. And honestly, they needed to be demoted because there's no way you can keep Asano Yama and Ichinojo and Jurio after yeah. what they did. So I, it would have been interesting if both of those guys like managed to get a few more wins in the final few days because you had locked cases for Asano Yama and Ichinojo on like day 11. But what do you do if you have no guys with demotable records? In yeah, Makuuchi? that would be wild. I'm sure if... they would have sent up Asano Yam. I'm, I mean, there's always exceptions to cases, so I'm sure there have been Rikshi over demoted down into Jurio. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna try to avoid it when I can. It's got to have happened, and I, I wonder if there's ever been a Bonske where like nobody changed. That would be, that would be wild. Mathematically, I possible. don't know how <laughs> we do that, but we'll find a way. I mean, I think it would be mathematically possible. I don't know. Anyways. I mean, you, you can only have so many Rikshi with eight and seven records, and the other half have to have seven and eight. I don't know but if there's a way that you can. Top half. <laughs> somehow, somehow, I, I think it is mathematically possible. I think it is realistically <laughs> impossible. Yeah, it's oh, one of those things absolutely. like getting a, yeah, it's like one of those things like guessing the perfect Bonds K or guessing the perfect uh, NCAA bracket or something like that. Yeah. Like it's possible technically but it's flipping not a coin heads 50 times in a row yeah theoretically yeah. it could happen will it exactly no. but it won't yeah yeah all right so jake we've gone through a lot on this bonds k what are you think are my biggest pitfalls what do you think i potentially got wrong here uh short answer taka no show um i think that uh yeah you've got like a range of three full ranks where he could realistically get dropped. anybody from like my Gashir, i wouldn't be surprised with a whole lot from my Gashira five West to about my Gashira eight. Yeah. I there's, think there's, there's a lot of permutations you can go with there. Specifically the one rank that you wrote about, uh, uh, you know, for, for pages, but like, I think Taka no show himself is like the most volatile individual, even if five West was the rank that was the most volatile. It seemed like, yeah. 
So, yeah, I don't know. I think that he's he's somebody that uh, I think you could potentially have missed him by a decent margin. Um, mm. I mean, I don't have a better answer, but that's not what this part of the the, the show is about. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting, maybe this is less of something I think you got wrong and something that maybe we can talk about a little bit here and maybe talk about a little bit more on the uh, uh, recap once the Ponce K comes out. But we talk a lot about how the the uh, the swollen Sanyaku ranks um, we've run into it a bunch of times in a row here. And technically you're creating a new bonds K from scratch every time. Mm-hmm. It's not like having four Sekiwake this time means you have to next time, but I think it does kind of indirectly perpetuate itself. I think just by like, like, for example, if you were to get rid of all of those Sanyaku ranks, all of a sudden the Maegashira one rank would be the, uh seventh guy on the bonds k as opposed to right now he's like the 11th guy on the bonds k um and 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 we get back into what we talked about more at the start of your prediction where there's yes there's ranks and that's what tends to be what we judge things on and what the bonds k committee decides things on but there's also like the order of the wrestlers themselves uh has to both of those things do not look the same on paper when the size of the Sanyaku changes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that having a, a larger Sanyaku gives more opportunities for people to get winning records and thus they can't be demoted out. And if they can't be demoted out, they can't shrink the size of the Sekiwake and Komosubi ranks. Right. So, yeah. yeah and that that's what we've been seeing. So it's, I've, I've just looked it up. It's been four straight Basho where we've had, um, extra Sekiwake and Komosubi slots. Right. And looking at just the lower Sanyaku ranks, Aki of 2022, we had four, we had six Rikshi in the lower Sanyaku. Two of them uh, dropped out. So we had all four spots accounted for just by the Rikshi that won. And then we had two other Rikshi that had winning records that would uh, indicate they needed to create new slots. And then you go to Kyushu where we had seven Rikshi with, um, in the lower Sanyaku. And actually there we had four of them drop out of the Sanyaku ranks, uh, leaving three, but we also had Shodai dropping down from Ozeki. So we had, uh, four spots. Uh, but then that was also the really weird one where there was just so many people that filled up that area that we actually ended up despite having, three people drop out of the lower Sanyaku ranks. We actually added five new ones to create <laughs> yeah. eight uh, Rikshi in the lower Sanyaku in the next Basho. And then that time out of eight Rikshi, three had losing records. So we're already sitting with five with no more, matter what you're already, you're, you're already, already have at one more. extra. And then we end up with seven, this Basho and only one of the seven is dropping out of the lower Sanyaku ranks in Tobizaru with a six and nine record. Yeah. So yeah, what we're seeing is we've created these extra uh, Sanyaku slots, and there's just not an. Those are the those are the best guys on the Bonds K right now. So they're not losing, uh, or if they are losing, maybe they're getting like a seven and eight record like Wakataka Kage, and not actually dropping out of exactly. the Sanyaku ranks. Uh, so that just leaves more room for uh, Magashir one to get a ten and five record to create a new slot like that. Uh, so yeah, I think exactly what you said. Just having more people in there, you get more winning records. There's just no room for it to clear out and reset itself to the uh two Sekiwake to Komosubi. Yeah. Yeah. And and oftentimes you have a couple Yokozuna and a couple Ozeki at a time mm-hmm. it, that are like a, a class. Kind of above filling those, those roles as the top guys exactly. at the top of the Bonds K. But since we only have two uh at that spot, the rest of the top five are all uh Sekiwake and your top five Rikshi aren't gonna have a disastrous three and 12 Basho that exactly. sends them careening down the bonds K. Yep. So yeah, I think it's, it, it was just something that, that uh, struck me as worth more thought when we were talking recently that uh, it, it doesn't have to be that way because you have, to, you, you are creating a new bonds K from scratch each time, mm-hmm. but it does kind of like indirectly perpetuate itself. So, yeah. Cause yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Like, like, like this Basho, we started off with at minimum, six Rikshi in the lower Sanyaku ranks yeah. when the actual minimum is four. 
Uh, so there was nothing we could do to reset it back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and normally something like this would probably be cleared out by multiple Yokozuna and Ozeki just clearing house. Cause those guys yeah. in the lower Sanyaku and the upper Maegashira often have very disastrous records when there is a top dog that's just, yeah. uh, you know, beating everybody up. So. Oh yeah. Cause, cause back when we had just like, since we've been watching and you had Hakuho, Kakuryu, I'll just kind of go with those guys. Cause we, we didn't have a whole lot of time with Kisei Nosato and Hado Fuji, Fuji yeah. while we were watching. And then you had about three or four Ozeki. The guys you were getting at Sekiwake and Komosubi were Aoyama for Abasho, Miyagiri for Abasho, Okinori sure, for sure. Abasho, Chiyotadio for Abasho. Not guys that you're really expecting to stick around here, whereas right now we've got a lot of hot, young up-and-comers that are just better than some of those uh, turnstile Komosubi and Sekiwake that we would have gotten. And yep. these guys are keeping them out of the Sanyaku ranks before they get a chance to get there. Exactly. And, and it's it's coincidence by this point that there's these this this class at the top that like is too good at beating each other for any of them to hit Ozeki yet. Um I, I feel it. We're we're gonna have a new Ozeki after Natsu. Yeah. Kitabayama or Daisho. That's is gotta be one it. of the top the top uh topics when we do our preview episode. But like yeah. we just like the last couple, we've got a couple very strong candidates right away. Oh th- this one, these are our strongest candidates in, in a while yeah. since Terra no Fuji. Ooh. That's saying a lot. Yeah. And we've had Ozeki promoted since there. Have we? No, I don't think we have. Mitaki, Mitaki, Yumi. Mitaki, Mitaki Yumi came in what? <laughs> yeah. Mitaki Yumi came in what? You're right. All right. Uh, that's all that I have to talk about on this episode. Oh, so we'll see, we'll see if <laughs> Shut up. we'll see where <laughs> Taka no show ends up. We'll see if Jake was right. That was my worst prediction. I, uh, I give so... you crap, but I'm the, I'm the one who keeps interrupting on a new topic and stuff like that all the time. So I'm not, I yeah, should shut up. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you just extended this episode for five minutes talking about the, the swollen Sanyaki you, rings. You tricked me into being enthusiastic about a Bonds K again. You, you jerk. <laughs> that, that shows the power of the 10 page outline. <laughs> yeah. It really, uh, really beats you down. Doesn't it? <laughs> oh no. I was going to say it, it didn't leave you like tired and waiting for it to be over. It, it left you energized and wanting more. I, That's I the think power it, of I my words. It, it beat me down as when we got into the teens, I think. And then I came full circle, you know, like when a joke, well, yeah, stops but I, being I, funny. I rushed through that area. I was beaten down at that. Yeah. Point. <laughs> it's, it's like when a joke stops being funny, but you just force and repeat it yeah. until it starts getting funnier again. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I had written in the outline a lot of times <laughs> talking about Asano Yama and Ichi Nojo was like, Oh, I don't, I don't think they're going to, uh, want to over demote a guy and then i get to like my gashira f- or like under promote somebody then i get to my gashira 14 i'm like ah shit if i put these guys here chia shoma's gonna be under promoted but i'm not Whatever. gonna i'm not gonna rewrite all this crap so i'm just gonna leave that there and i'm like how oh, with them treating the jurio guys nice last basho did it actually come at the expense of any of the makaushi rikshi did any of them get under demoted and then it looks like ah oh, shit mitori got under demoted that flies against everything i've been talking about for the past 10 minutes <laughs> and i'm just and i'm but yeah, i'm like whatever. It's Makashira 16. I'm not going to go back and rewrite <laughs> yeah. everything to accommodate this. I don't care enough, so this is what we're going with. You're you're going to see I beat myself you, down writing this one. Yeah, you're going to see that you got the Sanyaku right and be like, "Cool. All right. I don't I don't care about the rest." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, we will find out what I got right and what I got wrong when the Bonds K is released on May 1st, and then the Basho starts on May 14th, 2023, 2 days after uh my birthday for one, but most importantly, the release of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh so there's going to be a lot of podcast without Ryan. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I might just have to skip this Basho. We've we've got to we've got to play through Tears of the Kingdom when that. You comes better out. you better write that. Uh, you better write the outlines ahead of time for this guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna guess what's gonna happen uh, for the midways and recaps, and we'll just we'll just fly with it and see what hits yeah. and what doesn't. What the last thing I'll say on the schedule there. Uh, this is I think it happens I think twice a year. Somehow it lines up that there are there's one or two, maybe even three off seasons that are a week longer than normal. And I feel like this one, we were just absolutely blessed for this one to be extra. <laughs> Especially you. 
especially me with the amateur stuff going on. I'm losing all next week to work training travel. Uh, just the worst. Um, I get to go watch PowerPoints in Texas instead of in uh, uh, in Iowa. So cool. Yeah, I, um, I actually just traveled for work last week, and I actually thought I was productive. Well, good for you. I'm not excited <laughs> about mine. <laughs> but I'm just saying I, I appreciate that this was when we get our extra off-season week so that I can recover and get some more extra stuff going on. Yeah. So, With all the travel you've been doing, I know uh, – one of our patrons, patron great Rod Lunsford, has been insisting that we refer to you as the hardest working man in American sumo media, which <laughs> absolutely on principle refuse to do. I but like how that I adjective will... kept coming until there's only like seven or eight options of people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I, I, absolutely on principle refuse to say that about you but i will acknowledge <laughs> that rod lunsford thinks it should be said of you yeah you know what coming that coming from you is about all i could hope for yeah you're you're lucky i didn't delete that email the second we got it <laughs> it's only because rod has already earned your respect yeah that's oh, right man. okay right. well yeah why don't we wrap her up here yep so if you enjoy this episode, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you're not going to leave it a five-star review, you can shove it. Uh, you can get a hold of us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Search for Grand Sumo Breakdown. We've got a blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.org. We've got an email that you can send any comments, questions, or corrections to. That is grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That is 805-613-SUMO. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. <laughs>